Academic success is driven by individual motivation. And today's story is a success story of a Nigerian lady that batched seven scholarships from the U.S. to study a PhD in chemistry. Hi, welcome to my channel. If you are new to my channel, you're welcome. My name is Alice Rita. To all returning subscribers, I'm glad that you are here. In my video today, I'm going to be talking about the success story of a Nigerian lady that secured seven PhD scholarship to study a PhD program in the US. And you know, this is an exceptional case given the divide between a university and a polytechnic in Nigeria. And I don't know if you also experience similar kind of divide in your country when you have a higher diploma, higher national diploma certificate compared to someone that have a bachelor certificate. In order to be able to do a master degree in my country, you need a bachelor you need a bachelor certificate which you obtain from finishing a university. However, you can also progress into a master degree by securing a postgraduate diploma in order to argument your higher national diploma. So who is this Nigerian lady that secured seven U.S. scholarships to have her PhD using the certificates from a national diploma, higher national diploma? Her name is Miss Islamiat Ojelade, and she did her first diploma, which is the national diploma, OND, at Ogun State Institute of Technology in Igbesa, where she did science laboratory. And immediately after she finished a national diploma, she did not just relent and rest and look for a job. Rather, she went ahead and do a year-long internship where she secured some lab experience. So she was able to do some technical lab experiments, analyze data. And immediately she finished this, she went ahead and enrolled into a higher national diploma at Federal Polytechnic in Ilaro. And she did the same as what she has done for a national diploma, which is science laboratory technology. However, she focused, she majored in chemistry after during this process. And from there, she did a national youth service, which is the normal route in my country, where after you finish your bachelor degree or higher national diploma, you're expected to serve your country for a year. And normally you are placed to other parts of the country so that you can gain both cultural experience and uh, career experience. Our story is an exceptional one given the division between Nigerian University and Polytechnic. In order to be able to do a master degree in my country, you re it is required of you to have a bachelor degree. However, if you've already study at Polytechnic, you're expected to do a year-long postgraduate diploma, which is to augment your national, your higher national certificate. And then you can then go and enroll for a master degree and then a PhD. But this lady has, has broken the record by securing PhD scholarship in seven top universities in the US to, uh, to uh, study a PhD in chemistry without having to do the national postgraduate diploma. And this is where mentorship comes to be. She has this dream and doesn't know how to go about it until she reached out to people and, and asked for mentorship. So if you are in this scenario, whereby you have finished your university or your diploma and you don't know what to do, reach out to people that you, already, that you know that have advanced in their career or in their study and that you want to follow their footsteps. So in the next part of this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the process that this lady went through in order to be able to secure the seven scholarship. This story, this information I'm sharing with you, I extracted them from the information she posted on her LinkedIn page. So please check it, check her LinkedIn page out. She has shared some tips on how to get scholarship. She named the different people that were instrumental in mentoring her, the group she joined, and the information she has learned along the way. So please check out our, our LinkedIn profile. And uh, I hope this helped you. So what are the things that she did in order to be able to secure a scholarship? 
First, in order to be able to do any application, especially if you are planning to go abroad for your study, you need your international passport. So if you are looking to travel next year to further your education, this time is the best time for you to apply for your international passport because you will need this as a form of identification for your application. The next thing she did is to secure her academic transcripts. And by academic transcripts, you know for universities in my country, in Nigeria, they love to take time in processing anything that students need. So for instance, my younger brother has been waiting for like three months now for academic transcripts. So if you are planning to apply for your transcripts in order to be able to secure your to further your education next year and you're in Nigeria, now is the best time for you to apply so that the transcript is not what is not going to delay your application process. And the third thing she did was to translate a academic transcript into a standard that is recognized by the US and Canada. And she did this by using the West evaluation. And the West is World Education Service that provides credential evaluation for international students and immigrants planning to study or work in the U.S. or Canada. So if you're looking to study in Canada or U.S., you're at advantage when you already do your education, your transcript evaluation. So this helps the uni deciding university that you're applying to, to be able to evaluate your degree into their own standard. The fourth thing, which is very important, <coughs> The fourth thing, which is very important that she did, according to what she listed on her LinkedIn profile, is the academic CV. Many of us don't know how to design a CV. And it's interesting the type of information people put in their CV that makes it redundant. So if you don't know how to design an academic CV, let Google be your friend. Go to the internet, search for academic CV uh, templates. And when you search for the templates, don't copy what is there word by word. Use this template as a guide to design your own academic CV. And a, a good CV is a CV that contains the right information in a clear and concise way. If you need someone to review your academic CV for you, I'm happy for you to sh send it to my email and I'm going to look at it. I may not be the best in this because I don't do this for a service, but I've designed mine and I can assist you in modifying yours if you've designed your academic CV. Please do not send me a copied CV because I will check your CV against the web to know if you've copied and pasted somebody else's uh, template. And the fifth, which is important for anyone going to the US to study is GRE. GRE is Graduate Record Examination. It's a standardized test that is usually used in admission in the US or in Canada. So if you are looking to go to the US or Canada for your degree, it's important that you write a GRE exam so that this puts you, this projects your capability to the reviewers that will be reviewing your certificates. It's not a must. Some universities st clearly state this on their website that they do not require a GRE exam. But if you do it, it puts you at an, ad at an advantage. The second to the last thing that she did was to write an English test. As we know that despite that we study in English in, my, in Nigeria, most universities or whenever we go in abroad, we are required to write an English test exam which is really absurd and thanks to some group of people for instance there is a doctor there is a postdoctoral researcher in canada by the name dr igbala jobi muiwa he has been writing most schools in the u.s and in canada to reevaluate their english requirements for nigerians because all our lives we've studied in english for universities that has been listed on dr igbala jobi uh, LinkedIn profile. Those are the ones that already agreed to reevaluate their English requirements for Nigerians, and that way you don't have to write any English exam. And the last thing she recommended is for you to write a strong statement of purpose. A strong statement of purpose. It's 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 a it's a letter or an essay that show describes who you are, what you've done, the experience that you have, what you are looking to do in the future, so you have a clear 
guide of what you are planning to do and why the scholarship you are applying to will benefit you. A statement that requires critical thinking. You don't, just don't sit down and type it out in one, in one hour. No, it takes time to prepare. So if you're looking to write a good statement of purpose, I'm going to put in my description box links that you can use in assessing templates from previous scholars that have secured their scholarship into US or Canadian, Canadian universities so that you can use this to draft yours. Do not copy other people's uh, templates. It's always good that you should be original and write yours. The last thing she recommended, which is number eight, is letter of recommendation. So you require to improve your application. It's best that you get letter of recommendation from your lecturers. For most student, for most application, you need about two or three recommendation letter. But in order to give you a strong advantage, like herself that finished a higher national diploma and she went straight into a PhD, she secured about six to seven different reference letter. And you know, when you have about seven different people vouching for your ability, for your intelligence, and every other thing, this gives this port gives you a better picture, a better representation for the deciding body that are deciding for their scholarship. And this might give you a hedge with your application. So what are the eight things that she recommended? The first is for you to secure your international passport. Then sec number two, secure your academic transcripts. Do a, do a worst evaluation of your transcripts so that this gives your degree it's put it on the same level as a US or a Canadian uh, grading. The next is for you to design an academic CV, which would, uh, uh, which you need in order to, to describe yourself to the application, uh, to the people reviewing your application. The fifth is for you to write an English exam. And you may not need it because now that the universities in US and Canada are currently reviewing their English requirements for Nigeria, so you may not need uh, English certificates. The sixth is that you should write a GRE exam, which is the graduate record examination, which is a standardized test. And you need to get yourself a good statement of purpose. So you need to sit down, write an essay where you described who you are, what you've done, the experience you've gained, and what you are looking to benefit or how you look to contribute to the program you're applying to and what that information you're going to get will impact your country or will help with your own academic prog uh, progression. And then the last thing, which is number eight, is that you should get yourself a good reference letter from six to seven professors from your university. So with the success of Ms. Islamiat Ojelade, I'm glad that it's, it's now possible for people to, she has proven to the world that it's possible for you to use your higher national diploma to go straight into a PhD. And if you're not looking to do a PhD with your higher national diploma and or getting the documents that she have listed, which I've read out from what I read from a LinkedIn profile, it's possible for you to now secure a master degree into a US, a Canadian, or even a UK university. If you find this video inspiring, please share with friends that you know are doing their national diploma. Do not be taken aback by the long requirements that it takes to go for a postgraduate di diploma and every other thing around you. And do not be discouraged if you could not get admission into a university, be able to secure an admission into a polytechnic. You spend your time wisely and try and finish strong by securing a distinction in your education. And until next time, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.